When I was in college, one of the things that we wanted to do, well, here was our dorm. This was at Cal Poly. These were the red brick dorms. They were three stories high. And there were windows. There was a window right here. Here was the hallway. Here's a, you know, cut. There was a hallway here and a room here and a room here. And there were these girls that weren't paying any attention to us, as usual. And so they were, they were standing over here. You know, these girls are standing over here talking and stuff. And so what we had was um, some surgical tubing and some balloons, some water balloons. And so we thought it would be really cool to launch them from this side using the surgical tubing. I think we had a sock as, you know, like to hold the, 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 the water balloons and to try to launch them over the building and, and hit the intended target, right, on the other side. Okay? So the question was, at what angle would you have to launch and at what initial velocity would you have to launch these water balloons over the building to hit the intended target. Now what we did was there was some guy, you know, standing here and he would watch the balloon. After we launched it, he would run across and he would watch to see where the water balloon landed. And then he would run back across and tell us, you know, okay, more steeper angle or less angle or more velocity or less velocity. This was his room right here. And unfortunately, one time he told us less angle. <laughs> and the water balloon went straight through his window. <laughs> but there was a screen there. And when the water balloon broke, the water was, it was like it was vaporized into a trillion little drops of water and completely covered his room with water. It was really kind of cool. But anyway, we never did hit those girls over there. Um, and they never did pay any attention to us. But that's okay. I don't think we deserve it. But anyway, this is a, because, um, you know, you're, many of you are going off to college next year. You need to know these things, okay? This, <laughs> this is an important branch of physics for you to understand, okay? This is an example of what we call projectile motion. I think this was Sequoia Hall. Projectile motion. Now, what is a projectile? A projectile is some object that you've thrown or dropped or something, but it's an object that <coughs> the only force acting on it is gravity. Okay, that's the only force acting on it. Now, when we first launched the balloon, it wasn't a projectile yet because it was, it was connected to that surgical tubing and the surgical tubing applied a big force to it and launched it at very, very high velocity. But once it left the, the, our, our slingshot, the only, thing, the only force acting on it was gravity. Now, of course, in the real world, there is another force acting on it and that is uh, air resistance, right? But we're not going to include air resistance in our analysis here because it makes it too complicated. And actually, for relatively slow speeds, air resistance is pretty negligible. Now, you get up to 70, 80 miles an hour with the water, but well, it depends. If you're throwing a wiffle ball, air resistance is very significant even at slow speeds. If you're throwing a baseball, you know, uh, wind resistance doesn't get significant until you're really, you know, hitting it really hard, you know, or, or throwing it really fast. So, um, but anyway, this, this would be a, a, a projectile. And, and notice, and so we're ignoring air resistance, okay? And if I were to draw a free body diagram of this object right here, there'd only be one force. The mass of the ball times G, mg. That's the only force acting on the ball. Well, 
let's apply what we've learned to this free body diagram. It's, I mean, this free body diagram is so simple, it's deceptive though, but the, the, it has profound um, results. Let's draw, here's, here's our baseball, or a water balloon, I guess in this case. And it has a force of mg. Now, um, let's make this our x direction and this our y direction, following the procedure. There are no forces to break up into components, because there's only that one force and it's in the negative y direction. Now, here's something uh, really quite easy to understand. The sum of the forces in the x direction equals ma in the x direction, right? Well. What do I get when I add up all the forces in the x direction? Zero. There aren't any forces in the x direction. We are ignoring air resistance. Zero equals ma. So what does that mean is true about the acceleration in the x direction? It's zero. Which means what is true about the velocity of this water balloon in the x direction? It's constant. The velocity in the x direction is constant. All right. So if I were to just look at like a shadow or a projection of the velocity of that water balloon as it sailed over the building, if I watched the shadow, the shadow would just move at a constant velocity all the way over from here to here. Because we're ignoring, I mean, assuming air resistance is negligible. And it will be in all the problems we do. Now, let's sum the forces in the y direction equals ma in the y direction. Well, I look at this. There's only one force in the y direction. That's negative mg, which is equal to ma. So the acceleration is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared. That's what that means. The acceleration in the y direction is negative 9.8 meters per second every second. Which means that the velocity in the y direction changes. Is equal to a changing value. So if you have a projectile, when you throw a ball, its velocity in the x direction, once it leaves your hand, its velocity in the x direction is pretty much remaining constant. But its velocity in the y direction changes by the acceleration of gravity. Okay, well, this is going to let me uh, solve some problems. Um, so, let's remember our kinematic equations. And let's do this for the y direction motion. And the x direction motion for a projectile. Okay, the first kinematic equation is the final velocity in the y direction is equal to the initial velocity in the y direction plus the acceleration of gravity times time. And what is A here? What is the acceleration in the y direction? Yeah, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, the velocity in the x direction is equal to the initial velocity in the x direction plus the acceleration in the x direction times time. But what is the acceleration in the x direction? Zero. So what does that mean about the velocity, the final velocity in the x direction? It's equal to the initial velocity in the x direction. The second kinematic equation says delta y is equal to vy plus v naught y 
divided by 2. This is my average velocity times time. That's just the second kinematic equation. And then this is delta x is equal to v naught x plus vx divided by 2 times time. But what did we just say about v naught x plus vx? They're the same. So delta x is equal to v naught x plus v naught x. Well, what do I get when I go v naught x plus v naught x? I get 2 v naught x, which cancels with the 2 down here, and I just get v naught x times t. Well, let's look at the third kinematic equation. Delta y equals v naught y times t plus 1 half a t squared. And we know what a is, right? Negative 9.8 meters per second squared. But what's true about, um, if this was delta x I was talking about, what's true about the acceleration in the x direction? The acceleration in the x direction is zero. So I just would, I, this is zero, so I would just get delta x equals v naught x times t, which is what I got from the second kinematic equation. Now the fourth kinematic equation is vy squared equals v naught y squared plus 2a delta y. And I know what a is and all that. So, but in the x direction, the acceleration is zero. So, this would go away, and I would just get vx equals v naught x, which is what I got from here. So, what does this mean? When I have projectile motion, I have two sets of kinematic equations. In the y direction, it's just what we've al always done from unit two on. But in the x direction, it's the same thing, but the acceleration is zero. So I really only have two kinematic equations. Vx equals v naught x and delta x equals v naught x times t. What's the same though? What variable is the same in both equations? Hmm? Time. Time is the link between these two sets of equations. If I go back and look at my water balloon that was launched, it was moving in the x direction at the same time it was moving in the y direction and you combine that motion together and you get this nice parabola kind of a looking thing. So what this means is that you can use this equation for example to solve for time and then apply it in the y direction separately. Or you can solve for time using one of the equations in the y direction and use that for this equation to figure out how far it goes in, in horizontally, delta x. There's a lot of, of things, you, a lot of different problems you can do with this. Okay, let's also take a look at, let's say, uh, I, and I call this the kickoff problem. If I were to launch an object at a certain angle, and we're going to call this theta. This is my launching angle, and this is my initial velocity, v naught. I think you can see that this velocity vector can be broken up into its x and y components. So v naught x is equal to v naught times the cosine of the launching angle. And v naught y 
is equal to V naught times the sine of the launching angle. So sometimes you'll need to use this. So these are the equations that you need. Let me zoom all the way out here so you can see everything. These are the equations that you will need to solve projectile motion problems. So there's really very little new here. It's just we're applying it to a new situation. Okay, and that's what we're going to do next.